Who remembers the Bit Wars? A time where the power of a game console was measured in bits, and every new system promised to revolutionize gaming forever. Was it all just marketing hype, or is there something to the bit madness? Let's find out, and yes, I'm going to spoil the fun of actually explaining what bits are. Beware, some techno babble is incoming. Back when I was a kid, bits were the buzzword. The NES boasted 8 bits. Then Sega came in swinging its dick with the 16-bit Genesis or Mega Drive if you happen to not be from America. Not to be outdone, Nintendo fired back with its own 16-bit SNES. The stakes kept rising with the 32-bit PlayStation and 64-bit Nintendo 64, which I'm pretty sure is still revered as a deity in some parts of the US. But what are bits? Well, bits are, quite simply, the on-off state of transistors and computers. But what defines the bitness of a game console? That isn't so easy to answer. As it turns out, there's no international police force running around arresting Atari executives for calling a Jaguar a 64-bit console. And that's because there's no actual industry-wide standard for defining bits in regards to the marketing of a video game console. But let's cut out all the crap and get down to what it really means when you're talking about bits in this context. Typically, you're going to be talking about the CPU. But what about the 6502 in the NES makes it an 8-bit console, and the R3000 in the PlayStation a 32-bit console? There are a lot of bullcrap reasons people throw around here. Everything from color depth to memory address size to system bus or even instruction word length are given as explanations. Don't know what those mean? Well, don't worry, it doesn't really matter because none of them are correct. What actually makes the N64 a 64-bit console? Well, it all comes down to the size of the general purpose registers in the CPU. I know that isn't a sexy answer, but that is what it is. Confused? Well, okay, here we go. A register is a tiny chunk of memory in the processor used to store the numbers that it is actively crunching. The more bits in the register, the larger the number the processor can natively handle. In the golden age of gaming, say, the NES and the SNES, the more bits actually translated the better performance. A 16-bit SNES could handle much larger numbers than an 8-bit NES, allowing for more complex calculations and smoother game mechanics. This wasn't just about making numbers bigger, of course. It was about making games more sophisticated, more immersive, and maybe even more fun. But here's the kicker. While that bit count was a measure of capability, it wasn't always a clear indication of console's overall power. Why don't we hear about bits anymore? Well, just like my emotional well-being, it doesn't matter anymore and nobody actually cares. The GameCube, 32 f***ing bits. Half as many as the older N64. But no one with a positive IQ will tell you that the N64 was a more powerful console than the GameCube. The PlayStations 2, 3, 4, and 5? All 64 bits. The number stopped growing a long time ago, so it doesn't really matter anymore. The Bit Wars didn't end with a bang, it ended with a confused shrug. The numbers didn't scale up, and most people never really knew what it meant anyway. So there you have it. The Bit Wars were as much about marketing hype as technological leaps. The next time you hear someone wax nostalgic about bits, remember that today's gaming magic isn't in the number of bits, but a whole lot of other technological shit people still don't understand. Swinging back around to the Jaguar, what made that a 64-bit console? A big mountain of bullshit. But what about you? Did you get caught up in the Bit Wars? Or were you born in the peaceful years after, where everyone was obsessed with flops instead?